This is Christian Deck, and you're on SeaWanderBee.com. Every once in a while, you get a chance to do something special. In an interview conducted earlier this year with Hollywood legend James Caan, longtime fans of Caan get to see his perspective on many questions I asked him, including his new venture with OpenFilm.com. So without further ado, here is 25 minutes with an acting legend on many topics that range from The Godfather to Marlon Brando to Barbra Streisand, favorite roles, his views on society today, and many other topics. Our checkman was also kind enough to join us for this interview. Chris Shandick here with you, joining me today. He is now part of a film organization that is helping new people bring new technology to the film industry. Acting legend James Kahn, thank you so much for joining me. Before we talk about open film, I want to ask you first off, what's going on in your life? What's new in the world of James Kahn? What's new in the world of James Kahn? Sure. Yep, so well, my back hurts, I, my ankle, I, I, my, uh, you know, my shoulders. I've had 12 operations. Uh, uh, I get up in sections now. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, pretty much. Like, if you look at the little pinky, the nail on your right hand, that little pinky nail, that's the only thing on my body that don't hurt. So basically, that's what's going on. On a serious note, though, I just uh, I finished a picture um, in New York called Henry's Crime. I just got home, I guess, the beginning of February. A uh, picture with Keanu Reeves and um, and uh, oh my God, Vera Farmiga, and uh, you know, kind of a fun little picture. And then uh, you know, right now, just talking to different people to see. Who, you know, who might give me a job. Okay, well, you know, with open film, I'd love to know, you know, being from that earlier era of, of Hollywood, how, how do you think and what do you think about how the filmmaking, the production, and everything else has changed compared to those earlier decades that you worked in, how open film is using the online distribution and the online technology? I think, I, uh, you know, um, years ago when... When the studios were run by filmmakers, whether they were bastards or not, was was not relevant. But that's what they did for a living. They made films. I mean, uh, Jack Warner, Cohen, you know. I mean, all Disney, all 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 the guys. That was their business. And today, you know, we're dealing with guys who really aren't filmmakers. They're corporate heads, and they only care how many butts are in the seat. You know, at the end of the day. So I think that the whole outlook and and um, quality or of, of of films are all and 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 uh, and all the plots and all you know this CGI stuff and you know the digital stuff is all aimed at an audience that is at least 20 years younger by far than they were you know 20 years ago uh everything is sort of aimed from the, you know to the 14 to the 21 or 23 year old you know, whereas I believe in the in 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 the late seventies or through the seventies, I think that the scope of of all the pictures were um, just more you know character driven, more you know story driven, and uh, you know, like my parents, for example, used to go to the movies. It was a hobby. They'd go Tuesdays and Saturdays or whatever, you know, and then go to Chinese food or whatever. It was just a, you know, a hobby, which a lot of the baby boomers, you know, did as well. And, and, and today they don't do that. I mean, today they go to a movie. They don't go to the movies because the movies, I mean, all the movies were, you know, pretty good. I mean, I think, I think, uh, the talent in general was uh, on a whole, a little richer uh, actors, directors, producers, and, and certainly writers. Today, anymore, these uh, uh, a writer who's in his fifties doesn't get to, to work because because he's fifty. Uh, and I found that out when I was talking to a couple of these guys who, who write for television. They tell me they're writing under pseudonyms. I go, "What are you talking about?" And they said, "Well, you know, if you're not thirty, they don't even read your stuff because they don't think you connect with you know." the people who are viewing these these shows. So I said, well, so you're telling me like a guy like Bill Goldman, who whatever he is, 80-something, isn't better than some 25-year-old guy who just graduated, you know, college? I mean, it's just insane. Yeah. yeah. And the same goes with the directors. So 
this is sort of a long-winded thing, but it's basically, uh, you know, it's a great first question because uh, I tried to start something a while ago called uh, Boomer Films, and I'm I'm uh, I'm not much of a producer. I like to stay in my trailer, say my life, go back to my trailer. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, uh, because I realized that the, the baby boomer market is the largest market out there. And I also realized that it's the market with the most disposable income. You know, but nothing is made for them. And the only things that are made for them are the independent films. So now, in the full circle, you know, I know my son, who's on our board, has made some, you know, a couple of great little films, you know, for a million bucks, for two million bucks. And uh, one. Well, which was, I think, called Dallas 362. I don't know if you guys saw it. And, uh, you know, it won the grand prize. Won, but but then you got to deal with distribution. I mean, and, and there's a monopoly on that. So uh, this whole question leads me to why I'm so involved or why I got involved yeah. with open film from my perspective. I mean, I have these geniuses, and I don't know anything about That's the nicest thing I'll ever say about you, Dimitri, you geek. But... I have uh, an unbelievable team of, of t- technicians who can come up with anything that I mean the, the, the quality that, that they can reproduce on your on your computer is the exact quality that you shot it in and da 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 and uh, and our launch pad and all our programming material and, and and I mean it's just mind-boggling to me because basically I just learned how to play solitaire and on the computer and I thought I was pretty smart uh, so in this long-winded answer, it, it, it's a good one because it, it actually defines my kind of lust for this for this whole operation is to try to find or get back to you know finding the best talent and, uh, because I, I believe this business has nothing but uh, there's so much luck involved. I mean, too much a percentage of luck is involved. I've met too many talented young people who never had a shot and were never at the right place at the right time. So um, I don't know if I answered any of your questions. I think you pretty much summed up open film in a nutshell, but building off of that, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, it was a good first question as I started getting into it because, I mean, I know one of your questions is why did you get involved? Yeah, well. You know, I, I mean, I watched my son, you know, go through, you know, trying to just make, make films. You know, uh, Bobby Duvall and I are always looking for films and, you know, some of the some of the scripts I get, like, so they're just insane. I mean, they're insane. So I, I mean, I'd rather sell pencils. So.